Hello, people of the worldwide interweb. Today on the workbench, we have an oud, which is one of the oldest stringed instruments known to mankind. And uh, it came into the shop today because it is broken right here at the headstock. The only thing holding this in place is the uh, strings. So it's completely taken apart. Don't know if you can see that right here. It's must have fell on the ground. If you ever have a stringed instrument, be careful where you put it down because as soon as it falls and hits here, bam, that headstock's gonna snap off and you'll be crying. So I don't really know exactly how I'm going to fix this just yet. I have a few ideas, but once I get this piece here split apart, I will formulate a good plan to make a nice solid repair, probably involving some new wood. So, what I got to do now is remove all the strings. Let's get into it. first order of operations is there is actually a crack that runs all the way underneath the fretboard here. I mean there's nothing to worry about because it's not a fretted instrument but uh, anyways I've made a uh, oak wooden wedge and what I plan to do is stuff it in there open it up very carefully put glue in here being mindful that not to get too much on the outside over here and clamp it up overnight. Then after that, I can proceed once this is solidified to the next step, which would be to work on the headstock, recreating this piece of wood here that has the uh, kick in it. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do here is make a repair that uh, will be slightly noticeable if you look for it. But what I want to do is add a lot more strength than there was there in the first place. So, you know, the the, the two glue joints you're you're relying on are these two right here. This this piece right here and this piece right here, and this little veneer that comes along the back side over here. So. My thought process is to essentially just lop this all off over here and make that a solid piece of, uh, well, I got a scrap of black walnut. This looks like, uh, well, I'm not sure exactly what species this is, but it looks like black walnut that's seen a lot of UV light. Black walnut, as you know, if you want to keep it the same color, you have to, you have to stain it before you put a finish on it. So, that being said, drawing kind of a straight line right across right here, lopping all of that off. It's not going to affect any of the tuning area or anything. It's just going to come up a little bit deeper in the bottom there. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this and just throw it up here. And give that, get that curvature.
So there are more than one ways to do things and um, what I want to try and do is just do this as quickly as possible and uh, so what I have here is uh, the tenon jig uh, which is a fantastic tool. If you got a good high quality table saw get yourself a tenon jig. These things I use it for all sorts of different stuff. But anyways what I plan to do is make a nice 90 degree cut in here and it'll be cut nice precisely and clean and I'll be able to butt the other piece in there and hopefully get a nice tight clean glue up. So I'm going to slowly nibble away with a nice sharp blade and see what it uh, leaves me. So it's been about uh, 24 hours uh, that this glue has been sitting here um, after I, you know, fixed up that little crack running down the neck here. So we can take the clamps off and check that out. Good as new. Just a little bit of scrubbing and then maybe a little bit more varnish and uh, that'll become pretty invisible. Actually, this side's even better. I can't even see where it cracked anymore. So now we have to carefully clean this out over here, all of this extra wood. because We're not going to be reusing this. So after cutting and sanding and cutting again a new block here, I think I have something that uh, will work as a blank to fill in the gap here. So here's how this is going to work. It's obviously not in its final shape, but I'm going to have to glue it to this one. Okay, so that's how that's going together. If we look inside there, inside the headstock, that matches up pretty decent. Like I said, we're going to lose a little bit of depth on the, uh, the inside of this headstock here, but it'll allow us to gain a little bit more uh, material to glue on over here maybe make a little bit of a stronger joint. Now this part here has all sorts of uh, dried glue and it's all very uneven so we're going to try and straighten that out as well. So we're going to start working away some of this material and getting it into the shape to fit back in the neck.
lot of this is just trial and error, just basically making a little line and then removing material very carefully until you get a pretty good fit. And um, for a one-off job like this, that's kind of the way I go at it. Okay, so now we're getting to the point where we got to get very incremental. Now here, this is starting to look pretty decent. I still got to shorten it up uh, about an eighth, uh, maybe, maybe three sixteenths, something like that. Okay, so I got this fitting half decently and uh, I'm pretty happy with the result so far. Um, there are some spots that uh, I can see a little bit of daylight passing through. So I'm not really a big fan of using epoxy to do like repairs or woodwork. I much rather just use regular yellow wood carpenter's glue. But for this specific application, I'm going to let it pass because of its gap filling properties. So if you can't, you know, close something up 100%, uh, epoxy might be your answer. So that's what I'm going to do for this repair. And uh, I think it's going to do just fine. So there it is, everything filled up with epoxy and uh, yeah, it doesn't look pretty right now, but uh, I promise you it will get better.
Okay, so here's what I have here. This is what you call a two and a half pound cut of shellac, and I will be applying it to all of the bare wood spots and maybe even a little bit around here. And um, so I'll layer it up a couple of times and then I will give this a sanding to uh, flatten out all of the grain that it will inevitably raise and that'll seal it up. Okay, so I got a few coats of uh, shellac on this and now I'm just going to hit it with uh, a little bit of steel wool to hit all the high spots, all the uh, grain that was raised in the process. And uh, then we gotta make sure we don't have any dust on it. And coat it again. And again, and again, and again. <sighs> that feels much better. So here we are, we have it all back together. Now full disclosure, I have no idea how to play this thing. I just, uh, I'll have to spend some time with it. It being a fretless instrument really just messes around with my head, right? Everything just falls either sharp or flat. Uh, so, but anyways, we're here to talk about the repair and to hear what it sounds like. So I'll mess around with it a little bit. Here, I'll see if I can do a close up there of the repair. Turned out, turned out pretty good. And uh, off camera, I did uh, a layer of shellac over the whole thing. It isn't like a perfect uh, French polish, but uh, it does have a nice finish on it now, which will help to keep the wood in better shape uh, for a longer time. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's the way it turned out. Strung up, it's been strung up for about a week now to get all the, uh, the nylon strings stretched out. As you know, nylon strings are a pain in the butt uh, off the get-go. They don't usually sound really good until a week in after they've reached their final length.
So pretty cool to have an instrument that is, uh, you know, has origins that, that dated so far back. Uh, definitely neat to have in the collection. And uh, yeah, I'll have to practice it a little bit more. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.